It's Chelsea from Little Mountain Ranch and before I get into this video I want to send a huge shout out to two little boys whose names are Ryan and Emmett. Apparently Ryan and Emmett are new fans of mine. Their mom was telling me that she had put on one of my videos for them to watch and then she had gone out of the room and when she came back in she said that they had kept clicking on my videos and watching them. And then later on that night she was watching one of my videos and one of her little boys came by and said, is that Chelsea? Can I watch too? And honestly that warmed my heart so much and I think that comment is probably my favorite comment of all time. So hi guys! It's been a bit of a rough start to the gardening season this year. We had a loss in March and I just did not have it in me to be planting during that period of time. And then what happened next? I lost my soil block maker and I have not been able to find it. We have torn this farm apart looking for it so I ended up having to buy another one. And then what happened next? Oh, this was the best. <laughs> so I build a little mini greenhouse in my greenhouse, which I'll show you in a minute. And I use a little heater like this to keep it warm. And I had no issues with it last year at all. This year, something went a little wonky with the thermostat and it didn't shut off when it was a really warm day. When I came down to, down to check on my plants, I think I lost four, yeah, I lost four trays to overheating which was pretty unfortunate. But I just decided to not stress about it and just to get as many seeds planted as I could and come what may. The good news is, is Kate and I came out here the other day and started a whole bunch of soil blocks, which is what she's doing back there. She is a master soil block maker. I'll show you that in a minute. And we ended up getting 10 flats made and planted and the seeds actually, and that was only I think three days ago and the seeds are already coming up, so I'll show you that. This one here is broccoli and there's a whole bunch of little sprouts coming up here and a few little ones coming up here, broccoli, both broccoli and cauliflower. And I also have a whole bunch of sunflowers that are coming up and a few other odds and ends. So I wanted to run you through everything that I'm planting today and recommend a couple of varieties that work really, really well in a northern climate and then talk about a couple of the experiments that I'm going to try this year. So do you see these little tiny plants? Does anybody recognize what these are? Oh, this one has little seeds stuck on the top of it. Let's see if I can get it off without wrecking the leaf. I actually find with this particular plant that the little seeds get stuck on the ends and don't come off. So anyway, I was helping that one out and these two too. This is okra. I tried planting okra last year. I was really determined to grow it and I wasn't successful. It just did not grow. It didn't have enough heat is what I think happened. So I decided to try again this year. I'm determined to grow okra in a northern climate. I just think that would be really fun. And the other thing that I'm going to do is to try planting a whole bunch of different varieties of tomatoes outside. So we live in a zone four and normally tomatoes just don't ripen without some kind of extra heat in our climate. So usually in a greenhouse. We're in my greenhouse right now and this is where I just generally grow tomatoes but I can between four and six hundred pounds of tomatoes every year and I can't grow that amount in this little tiny greenhouse <clears throat> and normally I go down south a couple of hours from here and I order my canning tomatoes in bulk. I would really like to not do that so the long-term goal is to have a really large hoop house style greenhouse that I can grow my tomatoes in but that's not in the budget for this year so I'm going to try growing several different varieties under small little like uh, the hoop house, I don't really know what it is, but the little like hoop house kind of style greenhouse row cover. Um, and so I'm gonna try doing a whole bunch of different varieties of tomatoes out there and I'll show you those in a few minutes. I'm really excited about this experiment. I don't know if it's gonna work, but we'll give it a try. I'm gonna grab my seeds and show you what I'm planting this year. I have so many seeds here. I don't know how many I'll be able to get through, but I will share with you some of the ones that I'm the most excited about. I don't think this is gonna work with this wind. It's so noisy. All right, the first thing that I wanna share with you is my tomatoes. Now, these are some of the tomatoes that I'm gonna be planting, but one of my subscribers just sent me in the mail a bunch of different varieties of, of heirloom kind of exotic tomatoes, and I'm super excited to get that package, so I'll show you that when it comes in the mail. But for now, I have a jelly bean hybrid tomato, a yellow stuffer tomato, standard sweet millions, I love sweet million. These are called a sweetie tomato and they're um, kind of a size-wise between, um, between a cherry tomato and a plum tomato. 
green zebra. Aren't those beautiful? And then this one has a whole bunch in it. Um, black, pink, red, and yellow brandy wine tomatoes. So that's in this package. Okay, you guys know I'm a huge fan of anything squash. It's my favorite plant to grow. My favorite plant to eat is probably kale, but my favorite plant to grow is definitely squash. So I have scallopini, spaghetti squash, of course. This one stores really, really well. We're still eating spaghetti squash out of our um, cold room and it holds up well. These cucumbers, you guys, if you live in a northern climate, this is the kind of cucumber to get. It's from West Coast Seeds and it's called Socrates. And I grew these in my greenhouse. I grew three plants and I ended up with enough cucumbers just for eating on a daily basis for most of the season. Super, super prolific. And they are also cold hardy, which is what you want in a cold climate. These ones I thought looked really cool. They're called Uchiki Red Curry. Isn't that beautiful? This is just a standard package. They put a lot of their squash in. Oh, that wind. I keep having to pause because it's so windy. Hang on, I'll be back in a sec. If it's not the wind, it's the sun. <laughs> so Kate's laughing because every time I'm trying to film in between the, the loud wind, but then the sun comes out from behind a cloud and the minute the sun goes back behind the cloud again, the wind kicks up again. So, okay, some more squash here. Where were we? Here we were. Okay, so this is a yellow crookneck squash, zucchini green and this one is a yellow it's called goldie i've grown this one a few years in a row and it's a good one small sugar pumpkins if you'll remember back i was having issues with my sugar pumpkins going soft in my um, pantry but what i think was happening was that it, it was too cold for them and i love these little pumpkins and they're super prolific so i thought i would try again this year storing them in a different place that's a little bit warmer Buttercup squash and I this one was my favorite squash from last year So I got two different kinds of buttercup, but <laughs> Buttercup squash I got this one which is Burgess buttercup squash and then I also got bonbon which was the one that I planted last year that was so successful and a ton of pickling cucumbers tons and tons. I love making pickles So I plant a lot of them uh, Dill's Atlantic Giant, and this is just novelty pumpkin for the kids. We grew a couple of really huge ones last year. Butternut squash, this is another favorite and stores really well. And a whole bunch of peas, and this one is called Lincoln Homesteader. Um, and it is a really, really good pea. It does really well in, I mean, all peas do well in cool climates, but this one actually did okay. I planted it late last year and it ended up getting some heat and it still did really well. And then Rhonda, who's a subscriber of mine, she sent me small organic pumpkin acorn size and an heirloom organic Cinderella pumpkin. So I'm really excited to plant these. And then um, cilantro, a whole bunch of cabbage. And I wanted to show you the kinds of cabbage. I wonder if I still, there we go. I wanted to show you some specific varieties that work really well in a colder climate. This one's called Amazing. This one is Cauliflower. Copenhagen Market Cabbage. Charmant Cabbage. Everest Broccoli. And just a hybrid blend broccoli that I got from West Coast Seeds. If you look back on some of my videos from last summer, oh, that wind is kicking up again. We got an incredible harvest. I'm gonna have to wait again. Good gracious. Good gracious, Caitlin. I had a really, really excellent harvest on broccoli and cauliflower and cabbages last year. So if you look back, I'll try to link, I think I have it in a bunch of different videos, but I'll link my garden playlist up here anyway, if you wanna go and check that out. But those varieties are really, really good ones and I highly recommend them. Uh, if you've been following along on my root cellar experiments, one of the things that I have been testing is how long I can have cabbage last in my root cellar. So I just brought a cabbage out of my root cellar a couple of days ago and it was still crisp so I'll go grab another one in a few minutes and I'll show you how they are doing and we're almost seven months into storage which is just unbelievable so those cabbages the market what was it again the Copenhagen market cabbage and the Charmant cabbage both west coast seeds organic seeds and those ones I definitely recommend for long-term storage and now I'm gonna have to pause again until the wind dies down. <laughs> okay, the wind's died down a little bit. So I also have Futsa Black Early. Can you see how beautiful that is? Gorgeous squash. And then a Queensland Blue Squash. Another beautiful one. 
I'm trying this early Jersey Wakefield cabbage, um, cilantro, a bunch of different flowers. And if you saw my garden last year, you saw that I have tons of nasturtiums planted all over the place because I love a splash of color in my vegetable garden. And in fact, this year I've been sketching out the layout that I wanna do for my garden. One of the ways that I love to grow vegetables is to kind of make my garden feel really whimsical and magical on top of being really practical. So I'm gonna do lots of companion planting like I usually do, but I wanna plant everything kind of in a rainbow. Um, and interdisperse the plant so it looks really colorful and pleasing to the eye. So once I get that plan really um, settled in, I'll show that to you guys. But um, so lots of nasturtiums to go in there and wildflowers, lots of bee loving plants, rutabagas. So bush beans, yellow and green bush beans, lots of different kinds of spinach, lettuce, dill, I love dill, it's so beautiful. I pl I'm planting about six different varieties of carrots, all different kinds of beets, probably about six different varieties of beet. And I just realized I left some seeds up to the house, so Diego's gonna run up and grab those for me. Plan is to get the rest of the heat loving, longer to mature plants like the tomatoes and the peppers and all of that finished being planted today. And then on around the 15th or so, 14th or 15th, then I will get all of my squash planted. You usually wanna do that about three or four weeks before you're gonna put everything in the ground. And we usually put all of our stuff in the ground by the 20th, but because I have this larger green a greenhouse space to start my plants. I don't mind if everything gets a little bit larger, so I'm gonna start all my squashes early to get an early start on everything this year. We are not big fans of radishes, but I just love the fact that they come up so early in the year, so I have some radishes and a whole bunch of parsnips. I mentioned that I love parsnips, and I didn't know that. I had never actually had them before this last year, so I think I bought I don't know, four or five different packages <laughs> of parsnips. And then this is the bonbon squash that I was talking about, the buttercup squash. And then a bunch of just flowers because flowers are beautiful and I wanna have them planted all over. So I'm going to actually give these a little bit of a head start and get them planted today. More spinach and more parsnips. So that's a lot of seeds. I'm really excited to get the rest of these planted. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Kate is, you can see over there, she is making soil blocks. And this is how it's done. I'm gonna get you to show this because you're so much better. I'll show, but you're I don't have to talk. No, you I? don't have to talk, okay. but you can show because you're so much better at it than I am. Look at those pretty little soil blocks. Hers are so much better than mine. So we're just using this table to put them on and then put them in trays like this. Normally I plant all of my squashes in the larger containers just so I don't have to pot up after, but pretty much everything else gets planted in these soil blocks. Last year was the first year that I used them. One of the things that I talked about last year, now where did it go? is this larger one. So this is the largest um, soil block maker that you can buy. And if you can see in here how it has the little square, this leaves an imprint in the large block so that you can transplant your smaller blocks right into here without causing um, any disturbance to the roots. This sounds like a really good thing. This is why that why I bought it. But one of the things that we found last year was that number one, we didn't actually need to pot up very many things. Most of the plants that we planted, that we um, put in the garden just were right from these small soil blocks and into the garden. And these are huge. Like this is a massive amount of soil. So unless you really think you're going to need to pot up to this size before putting into your garden, I wouldn't spend the money on this. Rora just ran down and grabbed me a cabbage from the root cellar. And this is how I store my cabbage with the root ball on. This cabbage has been in the root cellar for just about seven full months. And you can see there's a little bit of discoloring happening here. There's a little bit of mold growing here, but if I just peel back a couple of the leaves, it does not take long to hit perfectly good cabbage. Look at that. And the best part is that, listen, it's still completely crispy and tastes good enough to use in coleslaw. So if you are thinking about growing cabbage and storing it in your root cellar, I would highly recommend it because I just can't believe this. 
the reason that I'm repotting this rosemary is because when last year when I stuck it in this pot, I just used some garden soil and it's super hard. So I'm actually just gonna take it out of here and clean off all the soil and then put on put in some fresh potting soil. Oh dear. There, that's gonna make for a happier rosemary. Um, Dan bought me this little rose just to add a splash of color to my windowsill, but it needs to be in a much bigger pot. So I shall pot it out here. There, that looks cheery, doesn't it? I decided to do one more thing before we leave the greenhouse. We managed to get everything planted that I wanted to get planted, but you can see this little bed back here. I decided to plant, hang on just a sec. So for fun, I decided to plant some radishes and some spinach and some chard and some extra kale seeds that I had just to get some early greens. I've never done this before and definitely not this early, but I thought I'd give it a shot since I have this bed and I'm just gonna cover it up with a sheet of plastic at night and hopefully we'll get some early greens in a couple weeks. That would be really exciting. Have this little area behind me here. This is all planted out with what I'm hoping is gonna be some early greens. And I've just covered up with plastic just to give it a little bit of extra heat for germination. And over here I have my little greenhouse in a greenhouse all set up with all of my little seedlings in there. And I did a count and there's just about 1500 starts in here, which is beyond exciting to me. I still have a couple of hundred plants to start and that's all of my cucumbers and my squash plants. And I'm gonna start those probably in about a week. I don't wanna give them too much of a head start because they are a really quick growing plant. Before I go, I wanted to send out a huge, huge thank you to my new patrons over on Patreon. Um, Shelly, the Full Farmhouse Homestead, Angela, and Evelyn. Welcome, you guys. I'm super happy to have you as part of the Patreon family over on Patreon. And I have a link down below in case any of you are interested in joining us over there. I hope you all have a fantastic day, and I'll see you again in a couple days. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.